And we are live here with Ethan Donati. Hey. So welcome to Globe Trotting Entrepreneurs podcast. And I've got Ethan here as a young gentleman I met a couple months ago now um, at a great conference. And he is the CEO and founder of EJD Media and My Million Dollar Funnels. He has consulted for a billion dollar company, teaches digital marketing and neuromarketing, and we're gonna get to help him, help all of us understand what those words mean. He teaches at the number one university in Australia and worked at the largest neuromarketing firm in the world. He has helped his clients achieve seven figure funnels and online advertising campaigns through digital marketing. His clients have included international speakers, celebrities, and global brands. So welcome, Ethan. Thanks, Barbara. Thanks very much for having me on. Um, I did get a chance to read your book. You have a fantastic new book out. Yes. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what the genesis was in you creating that, that new book? Yeah, so I mean, the book's about the combination of both digital and neuromarketing. And the whole idea of that is, you know, a lot of, a lot of digital marketers speak about, you know, technical side of things, whereas they often forget the consumer behavior and the, and the neuroscience behind it of how to actually make it work. Um, so I kind of wanted to merge those two fields together in a way that's, you know, somewhat easy to understand and comprehensible. Um, you know, because, you know, there are, there are two very different but very interrelated subjects. So just to help all of our, everyone listening here understand, how do you define neuromarketing? Neuromarketing is pretty much the how we predict behavior from advertising before it goes ahead. So we after researching the brain, we know that conscious responses to you know focus groups, surveys, interviews don't cut it because the areas of the brain that are associated with decisions are not actually linked strongly enough to the areas of the brain that are responsible for language production. So most of the decisions that we make, we don't actually know why. So we're not sure why we make certain decisions. Neuromarketing gives us a chance to have a look at the subconscious response to marketing messages. So it gives us the chance to really see um, why or how someone will respond to an ad. Because that sounds like the holy grail of what everyone in marketing has been wanting to do and talking about doing for the last billion years. It, exactly, but it's it's not a a big field. Like it's quite you know it's not well known yet, and it's also you know still expensive to run properly. Um, so you know budget yeah, constraints, that, the biggest thing. I know that firsthand. <laughs> <laughs> yep, exactly. It is expensive. But but that's great. Yeah. One of the things I really wanted to delve in deep is how did you even get started in all this? Because I was shocked to hear, and I don't know if you, you want me to share how old you are, yes, but I was quite impressed to find out what you've accomplished in a very short amount of time. Yeah, I mean, so how I got into, I guess, all this pretty much was, you know, at about 15, 16, I realized there was, you know, a lot of unconscious um factors going on like I had a lot of social anxiety and um, other behavioral things that I, I wanted to be able to know why and how to fix them it wasn't a conscious thing I couldn't put a conscious response on why that was happening so I looked to things like um, I started researching NLP neuroscience unconscious mind psychology um, yeah. I, I delved really deep at a young age 15 16 into all that kind of thing um, and then you know once I got once I got connected with some neuroscientist you know, that's how I got introduced to um, the world of neuromarketing. So it all, it all started from, you know, my behavioral things that I wanted to fix um, and how that then related to, I guess, the wider marketing space. That's fantastic. So what were some of the things that you actually did to change your own behavior? Yeah, good question. Well, okay. So great question. I mean, I had a, um, a personal development coach and what they kind of made me do was when we have you know behavioral issues that are unconscious we like to put them away hide them and um you know make them you know yeah not a factor right what you but what you resist persists they said so they they got me to tackle it head on um 
so some of the some of the examples of things they made me do was you know going up to ten strangers and saying hi how are you out of the blue right which for me is very out of the box I mean you know me and you know that I'm not the most social person <laughs> um, so for me that is so out of my comfort zone but you know I mean from where I was to where I am now it's it's a huge improvement uh, so so it's it's yeah. getting, getting there we're getting there. But to the point, you're actually teaching at, at the University of Melbourne, correct? Yes, exactly. So that, that was... And how did, how did that come about? Because I really want to harp on this success because it's, it's a pretty amazing road that you've traveled so far. Yeah, so um, University of Melbourne. Uh, so pretty much I graduated about a year and a half ago. Um, and my, my best subject was neuro and neuromarketing. What happened was the, after I graduated, I actually got in contact with the lecturer and I said, hey, um, you know, I've been working in neuromarketing in the commercial world, you know, and I, I think I can teach and help the students out. And he's like, you know, okay, well, I'll give you a shot. And this was a week after I graduated. So I was literally straight away. I'm the same age <laughs> as the students. They're, 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 they're my yeah. peers and my, the same age, um, but now I'm teaching them. And again, way out of my comfort zone, but, you know, I did it. and 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 it was, it's been really good. Like I've been teaching there for the last, you know, 18 months now and it's been fantastic. So, um, it, yeah, it just started with a bit of dedication to, to that field. Yeah. But a lot of people would say, Oh, that's easy for you. You've done all this work. It's easy for you. Was, was university easy for you when you first started? Okay. So in the first, in my first year, um, I failed three subjects. So my first, <laughs> in my first university, year, I had, a 40, a 45, and a 30 percent on my average. My, my that doesn't sound good. It's, no. I'm used to hearing A's, B's, and C's, but yeah. it doesn't sound good. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. Um, I then took a year off because obviously it wasn't working, and then, then I came yeah. back and I had to sort it out. Um, but I got to a point where, yeah, now I'm teaching. I mean, yeah, so it's been a huge, huge, sh complete shift. Complete shift. Yeah. That's amazing. And it sounds to me like this is exactly what you do is create a shift for business owners who want to create their own million dollar funnel. Is that, would that be accurate? I mean, yeah, pretty, pretty much the business owners that want to, you know, generate online sales or they want to generate a, um, a following or a brand or both. Um, it's pretty much, yeah, I apply the digital and the neuromarketing side of things to that client. Exactly. So give us an example of some of the successes that you've had what, um, in, in actually creating uh, million dollar funnels. Yeah, so we've had you know, a lot of personal brands. So one that wanted to sell a $47 product. Um, now this was you know, earlier, this, earlier, late last year, earlier this year, where they really, they had a, a good um, organic following. So we were able to tap into that quite easily um, in terms of, all it takes to make a seven figure funnel in, in essence is a really, really strong offer. And once you have that strong offer and you direct traffic to it um, through organic, through paid um, and through those kind of methods, you can start to apply just a marketing machine to it. And that's what we did for this, this other person. And, you know, he raised, you know, seven figures in, in the crypto space um, just by just an educational, an educational personal brand. That's all it was. Um, he made a lot of content. And we were able to generate traffic and generate um, sales through organic and paid search. Um, you know, it, it sounds easy at the surface level, but there are, there's obviously a lot of technical stuff behind it. But at the end of the day, a great offer with, you know, a good budget and a good following can really see off the success completely. That's pretty amazing. And what, what was the time space from the time you began working with this person, this brand, until they hit their mega millions? Yeah, it was only six months. So, you know, it's pretty, pretty good time. Yeah. 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 Fantastic. What, what other types of businesses do you work with? Yeah. So there's been a wide variety um, from, you know, gyms to, you know, speakers that just want people in their events. Um, we got, we have a cryotherapy now that's doing amazing cryotherapy. Um, that's going really well. We have, you know, even some, you know, the people that are, a lot of them are personal brands in different niches, but then there are local businesses yeah. as well. So it's a wide variety. So if you had some suggestions for the, the most important thing it would take for somebody to get started, they're thinking they want to do a funnel, they hear all about even the word funnel. 
what's the single most important thing for someone to get started? The most important thing is, well, there's two things. The first thing is building content. If you're going to be a personal brand, you need to build enough content so that we can use it to at least make you a personal brand because the, without content, without um, some legitimacy, it's, it's a much longer process. So the first thing is making content around what you want to be known for and what your end offer will be is, is the most important thing. Um, the second most important thing is understanding that marketing in its essence is a long-term investment. It's not a, a quick fix. It's not a quick win. It'll help you get there. Um, but people, the clients that have a six, 12 month view on it, generally do much better than the clients that have a one month or even one week view on things. So, you know, it, it is having that long-term vision. And <laughs> Do you see people with a one week vision? What? Yeah, one week vision. What like, I'll give you a hundred dollars in ad spend for one week and see what you can do. It's like not going to happen. It's not going to work. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. So what are some of the other mistakes that you really see people making who are trying to do it on their own? What's their biggest red flag you see yeah i mean the biggest the biggest red flag number one they the number one thing is they try to do facebook ads without without having any technical knowledge so they're just doing an ad they, they don't know how to target properly so they're just trying, trying to do it all themselves and that that wastes a lot of money um, because if you are just having a guess um it's it's gonna it is gonna cost a lot facebook will cost you a lot if you're just guessing um, and the second thing is trying to do everything by yourself because when you think about it, you need, you need a, a funnel, you need a Facebook advertisement campaign, you need, you know, hundreds of ads sometimes and a CRM and all that kind of thing. If you're doing it by yourself, I mean, when do you have time to do content? When do you have time to build your brand? Um, so you need someone working on the transactional so you can do transformational stuff and that's what it kind of, kind of comes down to. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. So, what's the normal process that you go through with a new client? What, what is it that they have to give you to get, because what's the, what's the magic sauce that uh, they've got to be ready for before they even make that first phone call to you? Yeah. I mean, the magic sauce is they need to have a direction. They need to have an end goal in mind, or at least an offer in mind that we can bring to life. Um, if a client, has you know nothing ready and they don't have they don't know what their, what their business is going to be and they don't know what their personal brand is going to be about that's when there can be issues it can be you know the, the offer is not clear um because when you start targeting everyone you're really targeting no one so you have to have that specificity okay. before um we really get to work yeah that's fantastic so what are some of the other key insights that you would you would give somebody who thinks they're ready to get started what but do they call you how what, what's the best thing they should do should they go grab your book which by the way is a fantastic book i will i'll share the link here in a moment thanks um well yeah i mean the first thing is you don't know what you don't know so the first thing would be having a call you know sitting sitting down for 30 minutes and seeing where you're at and where you want to be um because yeah, if we do have a phone call, I can give you much more personalized advice and, and see where you're at. Um, that'd be the first step, having a call with someone that, that can help you. Um, because if it's not working, I mean, yeah, you need that, that you know, outside view of things to, to really see what's not working properly. Um, so I would say having a call is first, and then from there, we can give you normal di direction, either do you need a done for you model, do you need a consulting model, or can I just teach you how to do it for yourself? Um, that that's pr probably the the main flow yeah all right so i've added a link down in the chat for everybody to connect directly to your calendar if they want to book great thanks but who is your ideal client yeah i think it's a great question um the ideal client for me has shifted um you know at first i you know at first i was doing it very incorrectly and i was taking on everyone and, and anyone um, and that was, that was a bit of a mess. So what I, what I started to do was niche down to two things, either clients that purely just want lead generation 
So think a service-based business that just wants purely generation. Um, and the second one that's kind of where my million dollar funnels kind of was born from is for personal brands and speakers that have a vision of hitting a seven figure funnel or, you know, however high, a really high vision that they want to reach. Um, and usually that is personal brands or speakers that have their own events. They want to go international. They want to sell something online. Um, those are kind of the two, the two ideal businesses. Fantastic. Great. So if you're ready, we're going to jump into some of the questions for you. Let's do it. Okay. All right. So what is the one book you've given us a gift the most, or what is one another book that's influenced you greatly in your life? Yeah, I'm, I'm reading one actually right now. That's been great. It's called uh, intimacy by Osho. That is, that's a, it's a great book. It's pretty much about the, um, the realness of being human and, Stop trying to be perfect, pretty much. And it's great. I, I would recommend it for, mm. for anyone. Well, fantastic. Osho has a lot of lot of followers in Australia. Yeah. 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 So, and what purchase of $100 or less has most positively affected you, life, in the last six months? $100 or less? Oh, actually, it was probably a $50 um, ticket to go watch Gary V talk. I think that was... That was great. Um, seeing him live is just so different to, um, you know, on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> That's exciting. Yeah. yeah. Are you going, I don't know if you're going to see him. He's back in Melbourne uh, next yeah. month. I wanted to do the dinner, but um, I thought maybe not this time. I might just go watch him speak. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How has a failure or apparent failure set you up for later success? Yeah. I mean, the failure, the big failure was um, there was a celebrity client and I thought we could, do a lot of great things together so i took all the risk up front which by that i mean uh, it was a commission-based deal um and i i was covering ad spend now this was like two years ago when i thought when it was the first celebrity that i had been in contact with um it was just a silly thing to do and yeah it wasn't great it was... <laughs> yeah you learn that really quick <laughs> <laughs> yeah you do you do yeah, that was crazy What's one of the most worthwhile investments you've ever made, whether time or money or energy? I think the biggest one is, is time and energy into, um, into two things. The first thing that I put a lot of time behind was, was tennis and I became quite good at that, um, which gave me a lot of discipline and that, that time led to that discipline and that discipline has carried over into business and into personal life. Now that would be the biggest investment is, is that time. Yeah, that's great. So what is one unusual habit or absurd thing that you love? Yeah, I don't think it's unusual, but um, cold showers is what I do. I mean, I like to do that pretty much daily now. Um, I think it's getting more common, but yeah, I love doing it that. It is a more common thing. Dave Asprey's, I don't know if you get that from Dave Asprey's Bulletproof or who you first heard that from. No, it was from it was from one of my coaches actually. It was yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's great. No, I try to finish off with a cold shower, and I gotta tell you, I'm still a bit of a wimp about it. I can get maybe yeah. 30 seconds. I, I can't do a whole cold shower, so <laughs> yeah. I, I'm impressed that she can do that. Yeah. It's supposed to be really good for your, your immune system and getting yeah. your blood flowing, all kinds of stuff. Exactly. And, and brain wise, uh, Dave Asprey recommends that for the brain. Yeah. Definitely. Here's another fun question for you. What is something you believe in strongly that other people think is crazy? Um, that's a tough question actually. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Um, I mean, I guess compared to my, my old circle of, you know, school friends and, and past friends, the things I believe in now about, you know, investing in, in yourself and, and backing yourself are, are, are vastly different to, to what my old circle, you know, kind of believes in. So maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. that probably comes to mind. So have you created a whole new circle of friends and yeah, it's relationships? Yeah. It's, it's just <laughs> completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's so different now. That's great. So when you feel overwhelmed and unfocused, what do you do? 
actually um what i do is actually call call someone that i haven't spoken to in like a while and that because yeah I, I feel like um when i do get overwhelmed it's it's probably over something silly so i'll just talk to someone whether that's whether that's my you know cousin or an old friend i'll just give them the call and, and see what's up and then i'll be pretty relaxed after that yeah excellent so what do you think was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur earlier? Although you're still pretty young at 23, I would say <laughs> maybe you should have started when you were 13 or 18, like Vitalik, you know, maybe, yes. or... I think it was having a lot of, you know, socially ingrained beliefs um, about conservative, a conservative lifestyle of, you know, nine to five and, and university I kind of went down that track at the start, um, no. you know, but, you know, but once I started doing my own research and I was able to kind of wedge out of that a little bit. Fantastic. So what's the best advice you've ever received? Yeah, it's one, one sentence. It was, um, stop trying so hard. That was, that was it. Stop mm. trying so hard. And just, um, Ooh. That was, that's the one. That's a big one for a lot of people, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, because even in like, any situation where you're, you know, you're over, you're trying to do too much and, and um, you're worried too much. It, that's what was happening to me. And, you know, just stop trying so hard and, and, you know, good enough is good enough. Yeah. So what's one of the personal habits that contributes most to your success? You, you talked about your tennis. Is that your, is that your discipline? What's, what's, yeah, what's really the key thing? I think the key is having more more time management in terms of being able to fit in business, fitness, and relationships as well. So having those three things fit in quite systematically almost um, is really key. Like there's no point doing crazy long hours at night time. I mean, we know that's not good for your health, number one. Um, but number two, you don't need to do it if you have a systematic um, time to your day. And that's what I've been able to to really build on over time. That's fantastic. So because this is a globe trotting entrepreneur show, yeah. um, I like to talk about what fun places you like to visit. So what was your best vacation ever? Yeah, great question. Um, my best vacation ever was about four years ago. And I went, we went to uh, Europe and then we went to Los Angeles and New York. So it was about almost a two month holiday. Um, went to all the all the you know western europe countries it's been like a week in each and then fly over to new york fly over to los angeles it was awesome um saw the lakers play and yeah it was just great it was just great order. <laughs> excellent yeah. yeah it is such a long haul so once you're away sometimes it's easier to just keep going it is no definitely yeah. and if you could work from anywhere in the world where would be your ideal place to work from yeah, well, I'm going back to Europe actually in two months, so I'm going to work from there for a bit. Um, so I think I think Europe's some, somewhere that I really like to go, especially the um, the old towns of like say Zurich and um, even you know Poland and things like that, Prague, where it's you mm. know quite it's it's pretty like an old town that's still an old school vibe to it. That's what I kind of like to be around. So yeah, maybe somewhere there. Uh, so you're heading over during the winter over there. Yeah, the, the cold, the winter. Yeah. <laughs> you could just come down to Tassie. We have we have oh, winter here. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's the tricky question, but maybe not for you, uh, since you're so young. Uh, imagine you woke up tomorrow, and you still have all the experience and all of your know-how. You've got food, waters all taken care of. How will you make money in the next seven days? You're starting from zero. Do I have a phone or a computer? You have a phone, yeah. Computer or not? Uh, you might. I mean, most phones are like a computer. Let's say you okay. have a laptop. Okay, all right. So that'd be, okay, first day. First day, what I would do is um, go on Google Maps and find the 10 closest businesses. I would then call each one and pitch them a service. Um, probably a low-end service just to get some cash in the door um if if they if they if they all said 10 no if, if all 10 said no i would then go to the next 10 and continually doing that 
for the whole first day until at least one person signs on the dot that day. Um, day two, I would then start working on that client and then calling another 20 businesses and keep repeating that until there's at least, you know, a good income where I can pay rent and I can also pay, um, buy more equipment to do the job properly. So it, it would pretty much start, you know, old school, um, phone, you know, phone calls, cold calling. If I had no phone, I'd just be, um, door knocking, not door knocking, but like going to the business in person. So I'd be walking to a local gym and saying, Hey, I can help you do this. So it'd be very, so be, you've really gotten over all that social anxiety of, of yeah, calling people. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's gone. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. That's excellent. Yeah. All right. Day three. Day three. Um, by now there should be at least two clients on the books. Um, so yeah, there, there'd be at least two clients. I'd have an income um, at some extent and I'll be able to start buying some of the software I need to do the job properly. Um, once I have the software, I can then start attracting other businesses for a higher price. So, you know, I think after the first to have come through, it'll be pretty much a combination of doing lead generation by cold calls, but also LinkedIn and also start doing Facebook ads. So I'd be spending money on that as well. Um, and over the yeah. course of a week, that should be plenty of enough leads um, to get to a solid income. So that's amazing. You think you could be back in a solid income in seven days. If I did that day for day. Yeah. 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 That could be a really fun challenge It could be. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. <laughs> to document and go, look, here it is. Yeah, actually, that'd be a good seven good. day challenge. Good piece of content actually. You yeah. Could, yeah. It would be content and you could actually encourage people to do it with you. Yeah. And everyone goes out and goes, here's how you get your clients. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah. I think that'd be fun. Mm, I might consider that. This Cause most people are pretty wishy-washy on whether they could get it done. You know, they are, yeah, it, so. uh, you've got a clear vision and approach yeah. already in your head. So that's, that's pretty amazing. Exactly. Yeah. No, definitely. So the best way to reach you, Patty. Oh, I don't know. Patty Duke says she can't hear you, Ethan. Can't hear me. Uh -oh. She can't hear a word. Ethan's not saying. Well, if you can hear me and they can hear you, I will test another button here. Let's see if, if they're hearing that better. Patty, can you hear us now? It should be in here. Monitor. Uh, I got my fingers crossed. I have another recording. If it's not coming through on the live, it'll come through on the um, replay. I'll edit that on the replay. Sorry, Patty. <laughs> but, uh, Patty, you joined in. So, Ethan, I've got your Calendly link here for people, how they can reach you. Yep. Any last words you'd like to share with our audience? Yeah, last words. Um start looking into neuromarketing because it's going to be something that's more prominent uh, very soon. So start looking at that and how you can apply it to your, to your own business as well. Um, that'll be my last, my last kind of words of advice. Fantastic. Well, thanks for your time today, Ethan. Thanks, Barbara. Love hearing about hearing your story and uh, can't wait to hear what happens uh, with you in the next coming year. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, great. All right.